Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Megan. Or Megan. This is a horror movie. Now, first off, I have to say that it's a Blumhouse movie or a Bloomhouse movie, however you pronounce it. So right away, it's got to go in a certain category because it has enough charm and enough um, cool, creepy scenes here and there. But in no way is this a top-notch movie. It's riddled with, like, bad dialogue, some bad sets. But you can see the premise was good. But in watching the remake of Chucky, it's clearly in its own way a rip-off or paying homage to it. I would almost put this in the same category as, like, um, the spoof movies that come out, like if Pacific Rim comes out, you know, they'll do Atlantic Border or something. It has enough charm, and I enjoyed it. So, I'll get that right off the bat. Megan is like, like I, I guess it has a box office appeal, right? Uh, it did pretty well, I think, in, the sen in that sense. But it really could have ramped things up and really hit a home run for me. Because this thing had the elements in it. The creeping factor and the violence. It should have just, I don't know. It should have just taken a certain path and really put the pedal to the metal. Instead, it kind of bogs down here and there. And you've got some bad fucking actors in this movie. Bad. And even though you've got some good, decent ones in, in that sense, it, it just kind of stretches out a little too much in areas like they were doing filler but again i had fun with the movie and i get the charm they're going for in the sharknado type uh you know <laughs> area of genre or such that's well, probably a little bit better than that in the serious sense uh, but i'm glad a movie like this comes out and does good or grabs some attention because i had seen it on facebook from a cousin who i um appreciate the things he'll post and his take on things so i just said oh you know what i'm gonna watch it i'm a horror nut so and again going from the plot it kind of is right off the bat you know what's coming because they got the camera angle you know they're gonna do this certain shot in the car and from there on it's kind of um you know easy to anticipate what's gonna go on obviously and again, because Chucky, the reimagining or whatever, went Android, the spoiler here, uh, original Chucky is um, Brad Dorf, I think, or Dorf or something, and he uh, played Wormer, Wormtongue in the Lord of the Rings movies. Anyway, he's a villain, he gets chased by the cops, he runs into a um, toy store, and he gets mortally wounded, I think the cops maybe shot him or something, and he puts his soul into a doll chucky and those are the whole chucky movies up to a certain point where they kept the same story the same actor the voice and everything and it was more of a supernatural oh i put my spirit into a body and into a doll some voodoo stuff he knew and that was the whole five or six movies whatever it is right now i'm a big fan of the chucky movies even the bad ones and when they did the reimagining for chucky they changed it and said it was a software guy making these new dolls and the AI went haywire. So there you have such a close, you know, I don't know like which one was done first. Maybe the script for this was done before that. Maybe they're the same producers, the same writers. Like, I don't know. But it, it it's too close to that, in my opinion. So it's... um. It's a give and take here and there. So again, I you know I'm I'm enjoying the movie, but the plot with the little girl it, it's it's okay, it's good, and they they interject stuff here and there, and I'm and I'm just thinking like, are they just adding stuff to make it, you know, a little longer and write scenes just to connect things and make sure this storyboard art or whatever is put into the movie. It has that. It has a feel, I think. And getting through it, like I said, was not hard. I mean, I enjoyed it. But I can't sit here and say, you know, this is a 
you know, I don't know. I think James Wan is associated with this uh, the story. So it's directed by Gerard Johnstone, written by Alkella Cooper. From a story by Cooper and James Wan, who also produced with James Blum. All right, so, you know, I just find there's an amateur touch on this, and sometimes that's a little bit of a catch for me, watching a more fan-type fiction thing. It kind of, you know, gives it a charm. It definitely has that. You've got a great, you know, premise here that works on, on for the most part. Like I said, it does get you through the movie. But I think they should have just ch- t- changed the tone a little bit and really put the pedal to the metal and had way more creepy-type scenes because as I was discussing with a friend, I mean, when you talk about horror and stuff, when you equate things, yeah, you got real murderers out in the real world, and you have, I guess you want to call them slashes and stuff, but we can kind of, you know, you know, entertain the fact that an unkillable Jason or whatever is around. This is a doll, and when dolls are put, people have dolls in their house, so it kind of it takes a step forward in the holy shit. You know, I can be creeped out by this. Um, when I was little, there was a movie about, um, I think it's something under the stairs. It's like these little troll dolls are fucking killing people, stop animations, whatever the fuck they call it back in the day. It was real old. And I was young. It didn't come out when I was young, but probably before I was born. But in watching that, uh, we were sleeping over like an aunt's house, and she had these dolls on the fucking shelf, and I was terrified. So, like, it, it makes that connection, you know, um... I don't know, it's a, uh, it's a mixed bag, uh, I see why people can enjoy this, you know, it's charm, it has almost an irreverence to it that is appealing, and again, it's just, here and there, it's, it's highlighted by such bad acting and stuff, but again, it harkens to the Sharknado thing, and what would be the, you know, genre that that comes out that make pretty decent fun uh movies and i'm gonna give it that it's a fun decent movie it's not a riveting type um plot where i would because even chucky got really really dumb and reverent and you know get married and stuff it was just fucking ridiculous but the initial premise was pretty dark and went in a place that I think uh, achieved something, you know, almost unique in the sense. And even when they're reimagining, they come out and they do their own Chucky that's kind of an android or a fucking whatever you want to call it. It's going to resonate here for me. So I do have that in my mind. Again, this is fun. You know, when you talk about the plot and you're bogged down by real life shit, you know, the girl's parents are killed and She's taken in by her aunt, and her aunt's a software designer, and they pair together, because, you know, you got to pair shit and Alexa and all that shit, and it becomes um, a real uh, interesting story where it could have bared down and really, really hit home this connection, this thing where, like, a little girl who loses their parents still attach themselves to, you know, something or other, and it, it just, um... It could have been hit harder in certain places and really been, in my opinion, an outstanding movie. It has the elements here. And as you go through the trauma, the girl loses their parents, and the movie starts that way, you get into the Anne, who has the software, you're getting into the AI, and what's going on with this potential android. Um, They do Chekhov's gun type shit, where they show something that comes back later. Um, There's a charm to it, though, that I think is really going to be appealing to people. And when you get to the climax and the middle parts of the movie, I do feel it kind of, you know, stretches thin some of the things it could have really hit home on in certain ways. But when I get to the experience, it's fun. I could see myself watching it again and maybe, well, I think there might be even a sequel coming. I mean, that's what happens with these things. I don't know how much money it is to make this, but if you're doing a Blumhouse movie... They probably got um, good money by now with the uh, you know the type of movies that they do well. 
Because they'll put out a whole bunch of shit and throw shit at the wall, and a couple of things will stick. You know, they'll have some charm to it and some, you know, pretty good effort on. Because I've watched some of these fucking movies, and the actors are like drunk or drugged. Like, it's it's you can watch hundreds of these things like tarantula, shark, puss, and turkey raptor. Like, they get crazy. But this is about that. I'll admit it's it's elevated. It has a decent feel and look to it although i wish they would have again just uh gotten in and really gotten to the heart of the story that could have really been in my opinion outstanding so again I, I you know i weigh my my uh feelings and thoughts on it is it's something i enjoy but is if i'm a you know if i was a critic and i was getting paid to do shit you know it's it's bad in some parts. It is. And that bad is stretched out because they keep putting these fucking people in the movie. So it's one thing if you have a couple of people that are bad here and there. And, um, you know, they're in there for a little bit. But this, it keeps going. And that could be a charm too, right? That I could see that being something that is kind of, you know, part of its charm. So we got a movie, it's a horror movie, obviously about a robot toy, it's a big thing in the company, you know, it's going to make them billions, it's going to make them stand out over Hasbro, because Has is going to kick Hasbro in the dick, yeah, that's a line in the movie, by a horrible fucking actor in my opinion, but again, if they're going for that, it's going to work for people, and this could go into that category of, I enjoyed it, I had fun, but it's not that type of movie where I'm going to, you know, go nuts about it and rave. It's got enough of the, you know, creepy factor, you know, artificial intelligence and these new technology we have with pairing devices. And, you know, it, it does ground itself there. And like I said, it has some great elements that if they would have just really backed up and really went for I really think that this could have been a real... Well, you know what? Maybe it is still a classic in the sense where it's not for me, but people can enjoy it. But I would have really touted this movie went bes really berserk over it if it had really done what it had the elements to do. I think they squandered that a little bit throughout the movie. It's got some parts that drag a bit, and then they keep trying to interject a couple of things in there that we get the point of it. I don't think you need to, you know, keep bringing it to the fore, like, and again, uh, there's a bad actor element in here that you can't deny, and I guess it's in a lot of Blumhouse stuff, because I, like I said, I watch tons of stuff that I never even do podcasts on, but, um, I'm a fan of those silly, bad take movies, they throw together a budget and get some you know, washed up actors and stuff. And again, this is elevated. This is not that. I don't want to put that in the category, but you you, you feel it in throughout the movie. And I originally thought it was like a Netflix movie or something like that when I saw the promo for it. And I just forgot about it over time. And I had a discussion with a friend about a Chucky and this and that and how... I kind of enjoyed the uh, re reimagining, but it, it just went overboard in certain circumstances. And I'm, now I'm curious to know if they went and it's the same company. Anyway, you got some uh, really standout moments in the movie. I can't say like performances, like we're going to give the actress who plays the doll or if it's a doll person or you know, who knows, you know. And there's a voice, you know, like, that works. And the doll is the highlight of the movie, besides all the shit that's going around. And they do certain things that are okay, like, it would help in a way with describing the titanium body and ceramic alloy. And they say, you know, she's four feet tall. That's a big leap over a Chucky doll, which is so small. And you don't think it could do much damage. Although, when you go in the supernatural sense, maybe... And even in the reimagining, he's android, so he's motor parts, but he's small. Here you have a, you know, an android child. So they nail certain things about that that I got to give credit for. They really nail it. They don't really, um, 
uh, shy away from certain things in that aspect. But again, it's really about me saying there's so many there's elements in here that are so good, right? That it makes you almost uh, a little disappointed. And I this happens a lot with a lot of superhero movies I watch with the you know the trope about how the villains aren't you know uh, good or they have a certain villain when they did the Thor Love and Thunder which is a bundle of craziness I really liked uh, Christian Bale's character I wish they would have highlighted him more so I get a little disappointed in that aspect here this doll girl person let me look real quick uh, all right so Annie. Donald as Megan. All right, so there is a a dancer, child actress that is doing Jenna. I mean, uh, Annie, Megan, and Jenna Davis's uh, voice. This got to give credit, and like the little girl actress really nails things most for the most part. It's more like you know we have we have a great visual, great creepy factor going in, and. We have shitty writing here and there, and bad actors here and there. But the good parts and the elements of the movie stand out, and they work. I had fun watching this movie. I'm in no way, you know, uh, have a negative impact on it. But when I do these, I try to at least give a, like a perspective of, you know, my joy and happiness about something, having fun. You know, I watched Friday 13th Part 6, like, 500 fucking times and it's silly but you know it's not a really good movie but let's give movies like this a chance i think it's great so i do recommend it just watch it you'll i get if you know it does some things right again it's it's not um gonna be surprising to me if this movie's really well loved you know if it's got a um you know, its own thing going for it that uh, works on a lot of levels. I think there could be a successful franchise here, sure. And, like, they're doing a continuation and maybe it improves. But if it stays at this level, it's going to be fun. I mean, you, you got something there. There's something about the, you know, element of the girl and her attitude and, you know, the way they explain things about what she, you know, she's learning you know how that's all the AI stuff is these days. Superior learning and da da da. We could see a potential growth in here. And you can just have her fucking hide in, you know, Alexa and stuff. And then when the next product line comes out and three, you know, she'll just take another body. I wonder about the um, aspects of other AI spawning from this because. There's a thing in real science, you know, AI creating AI. So I could see there being real interesting ways you can go with this. Um, a fun movie. I had fun. It's got enough creep, another spook in action. It does it. It competes with some bad acting and dialogue here and there. And it's just much. It's better than the bad. So again, when you're in the mood to watch something like this i have no doubt people are just gonna have fun with this movie you know from beginning to end just fun and there's no real um there's no real big drawback in the movie that i could think of that would make me say to certain people you know you don't might want to watch this i mean it's not super long you know in that sense it although it does feel it here and there but I think overall, you're going to come from the out from the experience of, you know, you know, they did a little magic here and there. So, Megan or Megan or whatever. I know it stands for something too, like um, Mark Three Generation Android or something. I forgot what the fuck it was, but there's a, a lot of good elements in this. Just not a rounded out super epic but you know it's blumhouse like i said when i started this thing we'll see how they up their game and raise the bar you know you put out a certain amount of movies and we can go through lists of them and it's just horrible really bad stuff and you get a 
product of love like there's interest and there's talent and it shows in this so i'll give it the recommendation to watch it in that sense it's, it is littered with stuff like i said um the more i'm thinking about it the fucking bad acting and the little stretches of injected stuff that just seems filler is just being an honest uh interpretation but again fun i think for most for all could creep people out in that sense because like i said it's a fucking doll anyway that's my take on megan i hope everybody's doing well and i'll talk to you all next time laters